Let me learn. Today we'll be doing cash budgets and we'll be focusing on debtors collection and creditors payment to you. We'll start by defining what a cash budget is. A cash budget is simply a projected cash flow statement. It estimates how much cash we'll have in a specified period. It's all about cash inflows and cash outflows. The nature of the item does not matter. What matters the most is from that item, whether expense, assets, liability, or income, are we receiving money or are we making a payment? That's what it's all about. And the first part of the cash budget we will concentrate on will be debtors collection schedule. What is a debtors collection schedule? We are simply calculating the amount of cash that is expected to be received from cash sales and credit sales. But when we focus more on debtors collection schedule, it's all about the amounts that is due to us from debtors. How much are we expecting to collect from debtors? For sales that took place before the budget period, we are going to use actual sales. And for sales that took place during the budget period, we use the estimated or projected amounts. And that is during the budget period. Please note, cash to be collected from debtors will only be calculated from credit sales. I mean, we cannot say we are collecting cash from debtors when it's not credit sales. It has to be credit sales. Here we sold goods on credit. And when we sell goods on credit to a debtor, to a person, to a customer, that customer is called a debtor. We did this in grade 10. Now, please know that um, Cash from credit sales will be received in parts and those parts are called percentages. It's not like when I sell you goods um, this month, all the customers are going to pay me next month. Some will pay me next month, some will pay me the second month after the sale, some will pay me the third month after this, the month of sale. Now, cash received from cash sales will be received in the month of sale. I mean, it makes sense. If you buy something for cash, I receive money now. So cash sales for March means money was received in March. Well, all credit sales, will the collection will depend on percentages. The percentage of customers or debtors we expect to pay in the current month, the percentage of customers or debtors we expect that they will pay to, um, in the following month, the percentage of customers we expect to pay two months after the month of sale. Now, let us look at this example here. We need to use this information to prepare the monthly cash budget for Tower Limited for three months. Highlight that, okay? So we are preparing the cash budget for three months starting in July up to September. Um, now, as I've said, our budget period is from July to August, and you will note that before July, we only had actual sales because that is outside or before our budget period. Because those months have passed already, we are going to use the actual amounts of sales um, that took place in those months. Please know that here in this information, we are given total sales. So total sales for April will be 160,000. Total sales for May will be 150,000. Total sales for June will be 170,000. And for the budget period, because we are not there yet, we haven't, we don't know how much to expect in terms of sales. We are going to use the estimated amount, which is based on historical information. 
And for July, we made sales worth 180,000. August, we made sales worth 204,000. September, we made sales worth 192,000. Now, number three says 25% of all sales will be for cash. 25% of all sales will be for cash. Now, debtors are allowed 30 days credit, but based on past experiences, it is expected that debtors, um, well, it's expected that collections will be as follows. I will like you to highlight this because we now know that of all our sales, 20% of all sales will be for cash. How much of all sales will be on credit? 75% of all sales will be on credit. Now, since debtors are allowed um, 30 days based on past experiences, they expected that they will pay as follows. We expect 20% of our debtors to pay within the month of sale. Collection in the month following the sale will be 70% and collection in the month after the sale will be 8% and we'll have to write on 2% as bad debts. I will start with this little table here. I'll start with all my total sales as indicated. Then from this total sales, I will find cash sales. We said cash sales amount to 25%. 160,000 times 25% will give us 40,000. 150 times 25% will give us 37,500. And 170,000 times 25% will give us 42,500. For July, 180,000 times 25% will give us 45,000. For August, 204,000 times 25% will give us 51,000. And when you take 192,000 and times it by 25%, you will get 48,000. We also know that credit sales will be 75%. When you take 160,000 times it by 75%, you'll get 120. And for May, you will have one. 1, 2, 500, for June, 127,500, which is 170,000 times 75%. Or you can say 170,000 minus 42,500. Whatever is left will be your credit sales. Here's the thing, your cash sales. We are simply, um, I'll just explain credit sales, okay? Um, credit sales, these amounts must be used to calculate amounts to be collected from debtors. So credit sales, we are going to use those amounts to calculate the amounts that we are going to collect from debtors. And these amounts must be recorded. So this refers to cash sales. Cash sales will be recorded in the month of sales as cash sales. And um, I will highlight them, 45,000, 51,000, and 48,000. They'll be recorded in those specific months. So for July, our cash sales will be 45,000. For August, cash sales will be 51,000. For September, cash sales will be 48,000. As I've said, these are cash sales and will be received in the month of sale. Write them as cash sales and the receipts in the cash budget. Now, what does that mean? I'll go straight to my cash budget. And in my cash budget, and the... Um, cash sales, under receipts, cash sales. For July, I'll have that 45,000. For August, I'll have 51,000. And for September, I will have 48,000. Okay. The credit sales though, I'm going to use credit sales to prepare what we call debtors collection schedule. I will start with April, okay. April credit sales. 20% of those credit sales will be collected in April. 70% of credit sales for April will be collected in May. 20%, um, what was the last percentage? Let me just confirm. It was 20%, 8% of those, I'm just applying this. 80% of April credit sales will be collected in, um, in June, okay? I will repeat. 20% of April credit sales will be collected in April, 70% of April credit sales will be collected in May, and 8% of April credit sales will be collected in June. So none of April credit sales will be collected in the budget period, which is July to September. 
That's why I don't even care about April credit sales because all of them have been collected. All that matters is um, amounts that will be collected within the budget period, which starts in July. Let's go to May. For May credit sales, which amounted to 112,500. 20% of that 112,000 will be collected in May. 70% of that 112,500 will be collected in June. And only 8% will be collected in July. Why do I care only about the 8%? It's because it will be collected in July and July is within our budget period. And that will give us 9,000 grand. Okay, I'll take my June sales, find credit sales. Remember, credit sales of um, total sales will be 75%. So I took total sales for June and found 75%, which gave me 127,500. Take that 127,500 times it by 70%. So 20% of 127,500 will be collected in June. 70% of 127,500 will be collected in July. That's why I'm starting with that one. I don't care about the one that was collected in June. I only care about the one that was collected in July. And that will amount to 89,250. 8% 8 of 127,500 will be collected in August. Is August within our budget period? The answer is yes. That's why I'm going to put it here. 8% of that 127,500 will be collected in August. None will be collected in September. Okay. Let's start with July. Credit sales for July amounted to 135,000. 30% of 135,000 will be collected in July. Is July within our budget period? The answer is yes. That's why we are going to put it there. 70% of 135% uh, of, of that 135,000 will be collected in August. August is also within our budget period. So that's why I'm including it. And 8% of those July credit sales will be collected in September. September is within our budget period. That's why we include it as part of our debtors collection schedule. I'm done with July credit sales being collected. Now I'm going to August credit sales. You took your total sales, you multiply them by 75%, they gave credit sales of 153,000. 20% of those credit sales, 153,000, will be collected in August. That's why I'm gonna write it here. 153 times 20% will be collected when? In August. 70% of 153,000 will be collected in September. And obviously, 8% will be collected in October, but October is not within my budget period, so I don't like that. Let's go to September. Credit sales for September amounted to 144,000. 20% of 144,000 will be collected in September. That's why I'm including it under our debtors collection schedule. 70% will be collected in October. October is not within our budget period, so I don't include it. And 8% will be collected in November. November is not within my budget period. That's why I'm excluding it. Now I'm going to calculate how much I've collected per month. For July, I've collected 9,000 plus 89,250 plus 27,000. That will give us 125,250. For August, I collected 10,200 plus 94,500 plus 30,600. That will give us 135,300. For September, I collected 10,800 plus 107,100 plus 28,800. That will give us 146,700. For July, we collected this amount. For August, we collected this amount. For September, we collected this amount. These totals will be recorded in the cash budget as receipts from debtors in their respective months. I'm going to go to my cash budget under receipts. I'll have collection from debtors. For July, I'll have that 125,250. For August, I'll have 135,300. And for September, I'll have 146,700. All right. And that is about debtors collection schedule. In the next video, we will be talking about payment to creditors.
All right, guys, thank you for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe or like the video and hit the notification button to get notifications whenever I post a video. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. That's all.